Hello, welcome. We're playing doctor today. <laughs> playing doctor. Yeah, n not that much fun though. This one's actually a sick patient. Can you tell by looking at the leaves and in the picture there, what's wrong with this plant? I'll give you a hint. I can hold it with one hand without any problem. It weighs almost nothing. This plant has been chronically underwatered for an extended period of time, enough that the plant has kind of gotten used to it and is dying out finally and given its last breath. My wife tortures plants by underwatering them. I usually sneak in and water this plant every couple of weeks for her, you know, add an extra pitcher of water to it just to keep it alive. I haven't been doing it just to see what happened. She finally told me her plant's dying in the transplant. So that's what we're doing today. And we have a very special pot that we're going to use for it. So I'll get that all set up for you. So this is a special pot. It's a ceramic pot, pretty nice, big, thick. Drainage hole in the bottom, heavy. What's special about it was as a wedding gift for eighth anniversary, which is pottery and bronze. Kind of qualifies, right? But what makes it qualifiable is the drip tray. So I took a ceramic, okay, it's actually terracotta, pottery, see, terracotta pottery, painted with bronze, year eight on it, and then coated it all so it'd be waterproof and last forever. This is a drip tray under it, that's what makes it special, so I'm not going to use the big ass plastic ones, but I still might put one underneath this even, because I tend to overwater. All right, so that goes down first. Now, we still want to add a few rocks down around this hole so it can drain out. And get rid of that. I'm adding four sponges this time because the water lily, hence in its name, likes a lot of water. And as we already discussed, my wife tends to underwater I believe underwater it, so this is a compromise. Marriage is full of compromises. Unlike the government. Alright, so four sponges mixed in there really isn't a lot. We're going to add some dirt or soil whatever you want to call it, fill if you were doing construction or if you were an armless, legless guy laying in a, hill, a hole. I really don't know how big the root ball is on this, but I know I'm going to need more soil than that in there, so I'm going to add a few more cups. and spread it out evenly. I like to work to the other direction, so let's slide this over. Turn this on its side, roll it a little bit to work it out of this cheap ass plastic pot. Okay, we're gonna have to soak it to get it out. It's wedged in tight. It's root bound. It's been in here for years. So I'm adding water directly to the edge. This should help loosen it. And we just let that water set for 10 minutes. Okay. It's been a few minutes. Let's see if this has loosened any. Oh, it's loosened. Problem is, 
it's catching on the bottom of this pot. Whoa, all well, the water came out. All over my shoe. The bottom of the pot has a cross T in it that's supposed to let self water. Our roots have grown down into that. And they're not letting go. Ah, there we go. Persistent. It's been many years in this plastic pot. I hate plastic pots. See? That's why I hate plastic pots. Well. As much as I'd like to think these are going to come through, we all know they're just going to rip off. Luckily, they're not important. And there we go. There's what it looks like. See that T-shape I was talking about, or hex shape? That's solid root. This whole thing's going to grow out of control now. Now to add a lot of dirt, or soil if you want to be a dick about it. I use my special filling container, empty cottage cheese container. Once again, you want to use the same poking method with your fingers to get the soil down in around the edge of the root ball. A much bigger pot. This cheap soil has some large chunks in it. I keep stopping to break them apart. I would say soil's not that important because you can always add nutrients to it. And you transplant the plant often enough, the soil doesn't really matter much. Yeah, how you like that one, soil purists? No, I make my own compost from Mars dust and feces. Yeah, I buy mine out of a bag from a major store. Which is still better than the dirt that's outside, or the dirt that grows in wildly. I need to get the other bag of soil. Okay, I grabbed a new bag of soil. It's even worse than the last one, but oh well. It's not my plant, I don't care. So that's when the wife buys the soil instead of me. And I'm sure it wasn't cheap either. Thought, she probably thought it was good soil, but we can all tell that it wasn't. And I don't want to dish the brand, so I'm not going to tell you that was Stein's Flowers and Gift Soil. Okay, so there's about an inch down from the top. So we got plenty of room to water. When we water some, it will settle because there's a lot of void down in there. I'll water it more here in the next couple of days. Add about a can a day for the next two or three days till I see it running out the bottom. Now besides filling up all the, besides wetting down all the soil I've added, I also gotta wet down those sponges. And lava rocks do hold some moisture. Not a lot, but some. I might as well pluck the dead leaves off too, come through with the scissors, trim all these that are out. I will have an update for this plant and her other plants, probably, I don't know, a few months, six months or so. On Christmas time, I'll film again. 
show you how they're doing, see if they live, see if they died, see if my ideas with the sponge worked or if they all just died from it. Watch then. All right. Puff, puff fast, no parking on the grass. I'm out of here. Have a good one. We're playing doctor today. <laughs> playing doctor.